What's up guys, welcome back to the garage. So today's project is like the title said, we're gonna be installing this 12 volt power supply um, into my cabinets. So before we even get started, let's go ahead and answer the question on why in the world I'm gonna install a power supply into my cabinets. So I do a lot of automotive work. I wire up cars and trucks and stuff like that and boats and all kinds of stuff. And to be honest with you, a lot of times those things don't go as planned and we wanna bench test them. So, you know, a, a relay or a switch doesn't work or I need to figure out which way the polarity is for a fan or a motor or something like that. So I need to power it with 12 volts. So having a actual power supply here on my bench saves me a lot of time where I don't have to find jumper cables to connect something or find out a spot in the car that is actually grounded and use a power probe or something like that. So for me, there's quite a few benefits. Obviously, there's a lot of people who don't need this and have no use for it. And guys, this isn't the video for you, so you know we'll see you around next time. But for those who decide they could use this and didn't know that something like this product um, is around and some of the other tools that we're gonna be using with it, Stick around and uh, we'll show you what's going on. So this is the actual power supply I'm gonna be using. Um, this can be you know, bought on eBay, Amazon, things like that. I bought this on Amazon, honestly, probably about a year ago. I'm just now getting around to this project. So this is a AC to DC converter, so a power supply. Um, this one is for 12 volts. You can get these for five volts, 12 volts, 24 volts, whatever you know, voltage you actually need. And then it varies in amps. So amps is the amount of power that the unit can actually supply. Most of the time, you know, 10 amps, 15 amps is gonna do plenty for you. I decided to go ahead and go for a 30 amp power supply. Um, it's really fine writing here, but this is a 30 amp power supply so I can run things like um, radiator fans and things like that, just to give myself a little bit of headroom so I won't have to blow the circuit on this. But it is circuit protected. Um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, if you do plug in something backwards or the piece you're working on or testing with does have a fault and it grounds, you um, are pretty well protected. So that's what I've got to power it. To hook this thing up and make it actually useful, I've got a bag of what these are called are banana connectors. So you can buy these in kits. I bought a big pack of them. So this is what the banana connector actually looks like. If you guys have used um, you know, a multimeter or something like that, you're probably pretty familiar with that. They're really common with uh, electrical testing equipment, um, which is part of the reason why we're using it. But it's just a simple plug-in connector. So I've got a bunch of red and black, male and female. So all we have to do is plug this in. I'm gonna run this in my cabinet. So I'm gonna have the female portion mounted in the cabinet and the male side where we're gonna be able to plug it all in and use this on the bench to test things out. So let's go ahead and take a look at where I'm actually gonna mount this thing. So at the end of my row of cabinets, um, you'll notice there is a little bit of a lip here. When I bought these cabinets, this one was a one-sided one. There's, this is not a door, this is all solid. Whereas this side's open, I can get access to it. Um, worked out pretty well for me honestly, because I knew I wanted to do something like this, but this is gonna be my electrical panel. Um, not exactly storage, but I can wire everything in here. So this cable runs up into here and there's a surge protector on the inside. And from that surge protector, I have a bunch of switches on the side here. So bottom one is for my under lights, and then I have two here to wire up other things. One of these is gonna be for the 12 volt fire supply, and the other one is you know, open for another project, whatever I find to fill it. So to actually get everything wired up, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. I've got a standard electrical cable. Um, this is a grounded one, and the other end's cut off, and we're gonna use that to wire from our surge protector up in our cabinet to our switch, and then to our actual power supply. So as far as the power supply itself goes, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing I don't like about them is there's no real good way to mount screws in this to hold it up in our cabinet. So I think I'm just gonna use some double-sided sticky tape, but you wanna make sure that your fan and as many vents as you have, have access to clean air because this will get a little warm as it sits in the cabinet. So 
Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up on the bench to show you guys how to wire it up because once it goes up into our cabinet, I'm not gonna be able to film that. So let me just go ahead and uh, get this thing wired up real quick. So honestly, guys, this is pretty dead simple. So you've got three lines coming in. Um, hopefully you can see it here. You've got your ground, neutral, and I don't know, L, L for leg. I don't know. You guys will have to tell me I don't wire AC very often. So once we get those wired in and we plug it up, we get our green indicator light. So from there, we have all these, and we've got three positive and three negative terminals that are spitting out 12 volts DC. Beside this actual LED, there is a little adjuster plot. So this plot is actually able um, to adjust the voltage up or down a little bit within a certain range, um, depending on what you're trying to do. So for me, I'm gonna be working 12 volt for electrical, um, like car systems. So even though they are a 12 volt system, they typically run at about 13 volts. So Right now, while I'm on the bench and it's easy to do, I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to probably around anywhere from 12.8 to 13. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in on that. Okay, guys, so we have our positive lead and negative lead hooked up. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the multimeter and see exactly what our voltage is. So if you can read this as of right now, we're at 12.8. Two volts so you know this would be fine for most people I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up to right around 12.8 is gonna be our target so go ahead and turn it up so 12.86 that's plenty fine for me so again you turn this left or right depending on you know which way it changes voltage then you check with your multimeter and just set it where you want it so honestly, from there, you can go ahead and use this uh, unit as it sits. But for me, I do want to go ahead and mount it up in this cabinet so it's out of the way and I can run it to a switch and it's always there ready to go. Um, I don't want to have to dig this thing out of a drawer or anything like that. So from here, I'm actually going to go ahead and wrap my wires and everything. We're going to skip that for you guys because I'm not an electrician for AC. Um, and honestly, you're just not going to be able to see what I'm doing in here. So we're going to jump forward to this thing being mounted up in there. Okay guys, so I have the AC side already wired in and I've got all my cables for the DC side prepped and ready. Um, I did punch three holes in the face of my cabinet for the actual plugs to go into and I got the unit itself mounted up in here and hopefully you can see the LED does cut on. So from here I'm going to go ahead and get my connectors hooked up and the wires run on the inside and that's pretty much it. All right, so I went ahead and got everything run inside the cabinet and have the actual fittings on the outside here. And those who are paying attention are probably wondering why in the world I put three holes in the cabinet. And that's because I wanted a way to know if I accidentally left the power supply on. So I ran a pretty large LED out here on the outside, got that run through the resistor and run through the power supply itself. So when we cut it on, I've got a red light. So when I get done at the end of the night and I accidentally have left my power supply on, when I shut the lights off, I'll see that red light and I'll know that I've left it on. So pretty simple, pretty easy, um, but definitely something you should think about if you are trying to do this yourself. Okay, so I just whipped up this really quick power cable um, to use with my uh, you know, test stand essentially. And of course, you know, we have to have a use for it. So this is a, an exhaust cutout for a truck we're working on. And um, it's a good way to uh, show off that it actually works. So we've got power, got everything hooked up here. Let me get it plugged in. And obviously it works. So I mean, truthfully guys, if you, needed to adjust something like this off of the vehicle or something like that. This setup just makes it so much easier to do that. All right, guys, and that's about it. Now I've got 12 volts actually mounted up in my garage so I can have a test stand where I can work through any electrical components that I have. I've been wanting this in my garage for 
honestly, I've been dreaming of it for about nine years. I know this isn't a big deal for a lot of people, but this is awesome for me. It's been on my bucket list for a long time, and hopefully, you know, some of you guys can use this information and go ahead and set up your garage with it and um, make your workspace a little more useful. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.